Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-50. Last time, our party discovered that the flying porpoise had been destroyed and her crew lost. An encounter with the newly elevated Captain Santos ended poorly for the Green Guard as the group defeated them in the Eastern Plains. Grish suffered a rather serious injury but demanded the party get him to Apair in Tigos Vale as fast as possible. Phidias discovered the blade injuring Grish had most likely been poisoned. With the group galloping south towards Tigos Vale, we rejoined them at the ridge. Grish! yelled out Sir Omel as the large Zenobian fell from his mount and landed hard on the ground. The party jumped down to help and Yolanda explained what Phidias had told her. Are you sure? queried Brother Stance of the Verte Order. Phidias shook his head and confirmed he was familiar with the toxin, but didn't have anything to counteract it. The gnome shocked everyone when he pointed out that it was usually instantly fatal and that the Zenobian should be dead. Concern crossed everyone's faces as they looked at their associate and then back to Tigos Vale. Harris shook his head and began to mutter, Occupied city, troops between us and the Republic, Ill Grish, all for a bag of papers, as he smacked the container. The group huddled up and tossed out options with arguing on pro and con points. Okay, look, explained Brother Stance. It's almost dinner time and surely these troops will be headed to the tavern soon enough. If we wait and skirt around the shoreline, we should be able to get to the ship and possibly avoid any entanglements. The group nodded and Omel disagreed. Grish weighs damn near a ton and he's in no shape to ride. I still vote for a diversion as the safest bet. The sullen group went quiet for a moment and Harris spoke up. My horse isn't as winded as the rest of you, which means it is still the fastest. If you guys go to the shoreline, I'll move inland and create a disturbance. It should give you enough time to get to the ship. If my horse is as fast as I think it is, I should reach the dock as you get the ship underway. Stance shook his head and pointed out didn't even know if Apair was aboard the Republic, let alone enough sailors to pilot her, but Harris pointed out that they were running out of options. It's now or never, said the concerned mage. Yolanda agreed but stated she wasn't going because she needed to get to Sarcona's for a cure, which only made the group angry. We do not have time, pointed out Sir Omel, but was taken aback when the female warrior pointed out that it was Grish that was running out of time. Phidias handed her the strange dagger and Stance handed her the bag. Turning to the group, he pointed out that he, Omel, and Stance would be waiting for them on the ship in a hurry. The group nodded in firm resolve and the quiet was broken by a roaring stomach of Omel, which caused everyone to look his way. He apologized and explained that the hunger pangs were worse than before. Harris and Yolanda went down the incline and headed for the outskirts of Tigos Vale, while the other three took the unconscious cleric along the shoreline. A loud bang was summarily heard from the far side of town and a large plume of smoke began to rise. The far side of town became illuminated in fire as Stance, Omel, and Phidias brought the crippled cleric to the dock where a pair of green guards were present. Omel and Stance made quick work of the guards as Phidias took the horses and motionless cleric down to the dock to the gangplank of the Republic. The crew, along with Captain Apair, quickly rushed down to help and dragged the enormous man aboard the ship. A few moments later, Yolanda appeared with her horse, frothing from exhaustion. They're right behind me, she yelled, and ran to the deck of the ship, flanked by Omel and Stance. As Captain Apair yelled for his crew to set sail, another loud growl came from Omel's stomach. 
The flamboyant captain looked at the warrior and spied the amulet. By the gods, this isn't coming aboard my ship, he exclaimed and ripped it from Omel's chest. He pitched it over his shoulder and the item landed on the deck of the green guard ship. Omel began to argue but stopped as Harris the mage crossed the shore with a plethora of warriors chasing him. As Harris reached the dock, his horse was hit by a volley of arrows and he tumbled into the sand with an arrow embedded in his back. Omel jumped over the railing and clambered down the dock grabbing his friend and throwing him over the shoulder. As arrows peppered the ground under the Knight of Bacchus, the ship began to pull out of port and the gangplank slid into the water. The knight raced down the gangplank with a wounded wizard in tow and hurled him over the railing where Stance grabbed him by the robes and pulled him onto the ship. With the dock growing shorter and shorter and the crew cheering on the knight, Sir Omel launched himself at the edge of the pier and slammed into the side of the ship. Looking up, he observed a grunting Captain Apair latched onto the knight's arm. With help arriving quickly, Sir Omel was pulled aboard just as arrows peppered the side of the Republic. The night air filled the sails and the cargo vessel lurched into the water heading west towards Saydown. Yolanda and Grish were taken below to tend to the cleric as the rest of the party watched the arrows fall safely into the water behind them. We did it! exclaimed Brother Stance, but the shaking head of Captain Apair showed otherwise. Turning back to the dock, the guard's vessel had tossed aside all mooring lines and was headed towards the Republic. Can you outrun them? asked Phidias. Captain Apair looked angry and pointed out that they had taken on their cargo of silver and was weighed down quite heavily. They will catch us fairly quickly. Men to your stations, he ordered. The sailors of the Republic readied themselves for a fight as the green guard vessel began to bore down on them. A loud creaking and cracking was heard and the bows of the pursuing vessel stopped. The bow of the ship then began to drip, dip dramatically. A cheer rose from the sailors as the chase ship rolled and sank quickly on her side with the screams of green guards echoing in the fading light. What the Hades? exclaimed Brother Stance. Captain Apair looked at Sir Omel and poked him in the chest. Where did you get your necklace at? Uh, we recovered it from the night hag's trove. Why? The sea captain shook his head and laughed. That thing was cursed. It creates an unfillable void. In this case, it was the ship. But, and he wrapped the knight's stomach again, before it was your belly. He began to laugh heartily and then went below to check on Grish. Cursed? I probably could have died, muttered Sir Omel under his breath. Phidias looked at the dismayed knight and wrapped him on the breastplate. You still have plenty to spare, Sir Knight, said the gnome, who saw the look on Omel's face and opted to go check on Grish himself. Omel noticed the member of the Verte Order looking over the side. He pointed out, all's well that ends well. The two chuckled and headed below deck, but were met at the stairs by Apair and the others. Brother Stance asked how Grisha's situation was and was told it was gr grim. Yolanda had administered the aid given to her by Sarcona, but was warned that it might not mesh well with the cleric Zenobian heritage. Time will tell, responded Yolanda. We have two days to find out. But Captain Apair added, Two days if the wind is with us, my dear. I will have the quarters secured for you. It may be cramped, but it is better than dealing with the rest of Grisha's cast-offs back in Tigo's Vale. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.